This is perhaps the most uh, important chart that we have here. Uh, from what uh, what I've done is to sort of like uh, identify the people to whom the uh, the money went. Huh? So from here, so this is the residual amount which we could not uh, which we could not identify as having gone to anyone. Uh, Joe's account two point six four billion. Riza Aziz US two hundred thirty eight billion. No, and then from here you can see the transfers to Kubai C four hundred seventy three million to Najib US thirty million. No, and uh, so on. So these net and and so on, which uh, so we have identified by people uh, in, in terms of the fund movements. So this is the net amount uh, left with with them here. After you, after all the movements of the funds, so 2.64 billion here with uh, Jolo, US 111 million with Najib, Kubai C 473 million. This should be million here. Kusani 67 million and so on. So uh, just a quick, uh, some quick words about money laundering. You know, but the the other one establishes the debt. So the next. That the next part is how they try to make uh, to clean this money which was uh, already stolen. So this is the money laundering part. The Interpol definition of money laundering: any act or attempted act to conceal or disguise the identity of illegally obtained proceeds so that they appear to have originated from legitimate sources. So in other words, legalizing illegal money. So. The, the process of the money, uh, how it was laundered, was done through a lot of big names of uh, banks. Many banks, some very large were involved. Besides Goldman Sachs, there was Citibank, JP Morgan Chase, Standard Chartered, Deutsche Bank, Wells Fargo, UBS, DBS, RBS Cruz, PSI Bank, etc. Some were fined recently and uh, some had their licenses withdrawn in Singapore. So shell companies used, uh, were used in many cases. These included shell companies in Singapore, British Virgin Islands, Seychelles, Cayman Islands, and Curaco. Uh, this reflects an attack failure of controls on international money laundering. So I think although people talk uh, very much about international money laundering, uh, many, many big names are involved in this uh, entire process. So it's a failure by global, global banks. Uh, big banks uh, have been actually fined in the past for laundering money, EG, HSBC, Standard Chartered, BNP Paribas. They have paid billions in fines, but no one has gone to jail as a result of this. So they just pay the fines to the US authorities and they have been uh, let off. Huh? So this is a case of uh, failure by the global financial institutions that they did. So there were large money movements, suspicious transactions were not reported. Uh, Singapore conducted its largest ever money laundering investigations over 1MDB and uh, ESI. Um, there was failure to, be, to disclose and uh, Goldman Sachs also is now being investigated. And, now, and it should have known that the transactions were very dubious in the first place. Yeah. Singapore merely fined errand banks and closed the branch of one bank down. But recently uh, they took criminal action against some of them and uh, some of them are in jail but for a few months no, it's not as if it is like a major offense. In fact, all of this 3.657 billion was laundered through Singapore. Yeah? So Singapore remains a very large money laundering center. <laughs> so more recent developments, uh, Coots and Co. limited sanction for money laundering by Swiss authorities. All this is in connection with 1MDB. Four bankers were convicted in Singapore. Jolo's former private banker, uh, banker was among those who was jailed. This is Yo. And uh, Singapore trials indicated Jolo controlled relevant accounts. Almost all of the accounts involved were controlled by Jolo. Uh, US authorities may prosecute Jolo for various offenses. This was uh, uh, not long ago, Wall Street Journal reported. Question being, uh, why aren't we doing something about Jolo? Eh? So, uh, so that would be some of the more recent developments since the results. Some of the main conclusions: U.S. seven billion is unaccounted for, at least, you know, of which U.S. three point six five seven billion has been clearly established as having been stolen. But the amount of money stolen could be more than thirty billion. You know, outright 
because uh, the attorney general's, uh, the, sorry, the auditor general's report, uh, which was widely quoted by the foreign press, says that seven billion is U.S. seven billion cannot be accounted for. So if you assume that that amount of money has been stolen, and that I believe includes the U.S. three point six five seven billion which was stolen, then you have more than uh, you know something like thirty two to thirty three billion dollars may have been outright stolen. And this is in addition to the profit that they made from questionable financing methods, remember, 10 billion. And then your own payment for assets, another 3 billion. Yeah. No beneficiaries, uh, beneficiaries from the loot uh, include uh, Jolo was the biggest, and then uh, Najib, the second largest we saw. Uh, Najib's stepson, uh, Reza Aziz, Abba and IP officials, and Jasmine Loop. Uh, this, so these people have been known uh, to be the direct beneficiaries of this uh, looting. Of course, uh, it goes without saying, plenty of evidence of collusion, cowering and uh, cover up and suppression of information in Malaysia. I mean, uh, I think uh, don't need to remind you all uh, of the uh, removal of the previous uh, attorney general and the uh, last minute uh, no, appointment of uh, somebody else and. Uh, this new attorney general actually giving a clean bill of health to Najib and so on. So there has been a lot of cover-up and suppression of information. And uh, one thing it would not have happened if government measures were in place. Actually, if you look at Kazana National, for instance, now every company has got to comply with layers of uh, governance requirements. But uh, strangely, for one MBB, this was not required at all. It operated out of the governance requirements which had already been established for government corporations. And that's an important thing to remember. So YMPP is a deliberate scheme to steal billions from Malaysia. It is deliberate. There is no accident. No, I mean, if you look at the evidence, it was meant, it was set up to steal money from Malaysia. So the global, the global financial system allowed the crime, was complicit in the crime, you know? Yes, Big bank names in at least five countries involved. Singapore figured very highly as a place from which money laundering occurred. You know? And then shell companies in tax havens, multiple accounts and wires. So basically these are the uh, 10 conclusions of the report.